All right, on to the second part of the agenda. Uh, now we are moving to celebrate the leaders in our community with the Melhab Hourglass Action Awards. And I am going to pass the mic over to Taylor Carvery, Melhab's granddaughter, to give some information about the awards and present the awards to these this year's recipients. Hi there, my name's Taylor Carvery. I use she, her pronouns. I'm a pretty tall individual, mixed individual wearing all black. Um, today, I would like to highlight my grandfather, Mel Hebb. Uh, the lives his story has touched and to continue sharing his message, or sorry, excuse me. Um, I'm here to share his story and to continue sharing his message and to remember a part of the reason why we're here today. Um, being born in the South Shore, his life consisted of helping his parents with, the, with their farm and his education. As a nine-year-old boy, Mel had caught the polio virus, which led to a long journey of physical healing and emotional recovery. This virus ha was a hard one to beat and killed a lot of the population. And when and if you survived, it deteriorated the spine and muscles and left most of survivors disabled. Luckily, he survived um, and would have a lifelong changes to adjust to with only partial mobility in one of his arms and no movement below his waist. At this time, he was labeled Nova Scotia's most physically disabled person. The time he spent away from the farm was two years straight. It's hard for me to wrap my head around that amount of time being spent in hospital. This was the amount of time he spent in hospital initially recovering. This is solely the recovery from the virus too. He spent the majority of his young life in and out of the hospital. Last year, um, he may have had an impact on the school uh, or the where I went wanted to go to school. Uh, I only did I went to Dow for the one year, but I did finish it. Uh, while I attended this university last year, it was a reoccurring thought of how, and even at this day and age, how inaccessible the campus really is. And this is this has improved since he attended. So it's really sad to kind of think about how he had to endure that. Even in his book, he touched on plenty on the idea of how he was not able to complete school without the help of others. Um, in his book, he mentioned the way he was carried up steps to exams, some of his classes, and had to rely on others for guaranteed access everywhere. Even before university, his home life was extremely reliant on his family, even to use the bathroom. His mobility limitations never put brakes on his dreams, which led to proving to others that he was capable of success and readjusted, readjusting to independence. I never personally got the privilege of meeting him, but I have my mom and many of his beloved friends and family able to tell me of how much of an amazing person who inspires and con or who inspired and continues to inspire people whom have never met him as well. From what I hear though, I do have a female version of him in my life who is just as loud and happy as he is. Love you forever, mom. I believe the changes that people continue to make surrounding issues of inaccessibility is due to the leadership certain disabled individuals choose to contribute. His legacy continues through his daughters and grandchildren and also the winners of the awards throughout the years. I want to thank the board for inviting us and letting me to let, thank you for letting me speak and to share his story and would love to congratulate the winners of these awards um, meet a full contribution to the disabled community. Sorry, I actually not got done here. <laughs> Just me again here, guys. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Going on the script now. 
Um, no, sorry, that was my fault. <laughs> the Hourglass Action Awards were launched in 1992. That year, the theme in the National Awareness Week was local community action. On one of the week's publications was the image of an hourglass. This hourglass inspired the award's name and its spirit of timely action. In 2000, the name of the awards was changed from the Hourglass Action Awards to the Melhab Hourglass Action Awards in honor of Mr. Mr. Melbourne Hebb. A former chair of the awards committee, the spirit of awards remains unchanged. Hebb, who passed away in October 1999, was the personification of dedica dedicated action. His dry sense of humor could have been mistaken for grumpiness, but those who knew Mel Hebb knew differently. Mel gave freely of himself. Who, he put all of himself into everything he pursued. His life was a demonstration of the type of leadership and dedication the Hourglass Awards recognize. Contracting polio in 1942 at the age of nine, Hebb's days as typical Lunenburg, Lunenburg County, country farm boy ended. The disease stripped him of his ability to run, climb trees, and bathe and write. His paralysis becoming so complete that he couldn't even swat flies away from his face. But Hebb fought back with years of rehab and therapy, though he only regained 50% of normal functioning. Hebb's courage remained untouched. Hebb finished high school by correspondence in overcoming the challenges of being a wheelchair user on a campus that was often and remained less than a wheelchair friendly. Hebb completed his Bachelor of Commerce degree at Dow University. His interest in issues related to access was born both at, of a desire for an equitable society and need both of his own desire for a full life. Hebb went on to jobs at New Leaf Enterprises, Dalhousie Print Shop, and the Nova Scotia Rehab Hospital. All these positions demonstrated his work ethic and determination. He married Wanda, also a polio survivor, and raised two, dollars, two daughters. In 1996, he published an autobiography, Wills to Victory, an account painful at times of his struggle, struggles and their overcoming. A member of the award committee for four years, two of those chairs as chair, Mal was an inspiration to those, the others involved and to all persons. He passed away October 3rd, 1999. The following spring, the awards were renamed in his honor. I think that's all I have from this part. For me. Okay, well, I don't really have the names of the recipients. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I know, totally. Okay. <laughs> we made it here at the end.
Thank you, everyone, for your patience. We're just going to do a yet another pivot, and I will actually read out the bios for those who will be receiving uh, MELHEB awards today, and Taylor will present them. Thank you so much for your patience. The first award that we are presenting will be the Encore Award that will be going to recognize a person with a disability who has significantly contributed to the community, and there are two recipients for this year's award. The first being a local hero, Kendall Worth. Kendall, would you like to come up and accept your award? Our second recipient of the Encore Award is John Smith. As you can tell, it's been a while since we have done live events. Uh, so we're just going to, to roll with it. So again, we do appreciate your patience with this. Our next award is the Exceptional Service Award. Um, the committee actually uh, was very quick in recognizing this person's contributions, which goes to recognize an organization or a member of an organization that has gone beyond their mandate in service to persons with disabilities. And this year we are presenting the Exceptional Service Award to Joanne Bernard, CEO and President of Easter Seals, Nova Scotia. The next award is being presented is the Access Award, which is to recognize an individual, business, or a group without a mandate to serve persons with disabilities that has worked to improve access to facilities or services in a given area. While changes made to a building specifically to improve accessibility are eligible, we regret that there are improvements that are made that are mandated by the building code cannot be considered. This year, we are presenting the Access Award to Clifford Emberley, owner of Para Bistro, who unfortunately, because of uh, the fires, is unable to travel in today. So we will be sending this to him to ensure that he gets it. The next award, Community Action Award, which recognizes communities and municipalities dedicated to increasing opportunities for persons with disabilities in their area. This includes recreation opportunities, inclusive education, and employment opportunities that lead to the full participation of persons with disabilities. And this year, we are pleased to be presenting the Community Action Award to the Region of Queen's Municipality. You sure can. Good morning. My name is Darlene Norman, and I'm pleased to be the Mayor of the Region of Queen's. I identify today as a middle-aged 
woman with light gray hair, glasses, medium built. I would like to express our sincere thank you to the provincial government who in 2018 implemented this very, very important act. The, government, the Council of the Region of Queens in 2019 immediately jumped on board and invested in excellent full-time staff, Elise Johnston, who, because of the financial resources that the province continues to provide, we were able to use. So thank you. It's very important to create level playing fields across our province. And I would like to accept this award with Elise, who is our wonderful, dedicated, committed individual who brings to us her great ideas and we always support her. So Elise, yes, that's you with your big wide eyes. <laughs> if you would come and please accept this award with me. I seem to have forgotten to invite those who received the awards to come up and say a few words. So <laughs> I noticed Joanne is, sn is snickering over there. <laughs> I'm going to present the last award and then I'm going to invite recipients in order to come up and say a few words. The last award that we will be presenting is the Andre McConnell Award which is to recognize an individual who has gone above and beyond their duties as a provincial, municipal, or federal public servant, and has demonstrated, one, a commitment to person-centered service, always putting the needs and concerns of persons with disabilities first, and two, true dedication to supporting persons with disabilities to fully participate in their communities. This year, we are presenting the Andre McConnell Award to Robert Seeley, which will be accepted by Katie MacArthur on his behalf. I will now invite Kendall. Would you like to say a few words? I know you have to run. Yes. Oh, hello. <laughs> uh, yes, I do have to be out of here in a few minutes. I want to thank the award like organizers for um, cooperating with my time that I'm available to be here would be able to stay longer if it wasn't a wildfire, but still would have to be out of here by 11. But anyway, I just want to let people know that if you want to find out a bit more about who I am and about my activism in that, I used to write up until the passing of Robert DeBay, who I'm sure some of you in this audience, if not most or all of you, has been familiar with in the past. Um, I used to write for the Nova Scotia Advocate until that ceased to exist due to his passing a couple of years ago. And now I have my own blog, W-O-R-T-H-M-A-T-T-E-R-S dot blogspot dot com. That's where you'll find my blog. But anyway, I just want to thank you for the award and thank um, the contact I have in the community who um, who nominated me for this award and um, I'm just glad that my um, activism is being recognized once again this is not the first award that I have won like since I started advocating for people living in poverty and my advocacy does include persons with disabilities both physical and mental disabilities invisible and non-invisible disabilities and um, 
I advocate a lot for things like basic guaranteed income. You could even say, like to some extent, I was one of the early advocates in getting the current Bill C-22, which is being passed in Parliament and worked on. Um, I was one of the early advocates to get that going. And um, I'm a person with a disability myself. Um, I've had learning disabilities my whole life and OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. But I, you know, I consider myself deserving, and I do a lot to contribute. So I just want to thank you. Thank you so much, Kendall. John, would you like to come up and say a few words? Mike is hot. <laughs> so hopefully the wheelchair doesn't attract uh, itself. Um, first, I'd like to thank Pants and the uh, Penalhia family uh, for this award. Uh, it's a great honor. I'd like to thank my nominator, Jim Green, uh, for great to bring this forward for me. Uh, i also like to thank my uh, family for, I guess, uh, allowing me to volunteer as much as I do and my wife, who has been very patient with you over the years. Uh, it's very important to volunteer. It's been 32 years now I've been in a wheelchair, and every day I've enjoyed volunteering, meeting new people, um, and the value that you give back to the community in education, that everyone has value. So I think that's something to keep in mind. So uh, thank you all, thank you all for, for coming. Joanne, would you like to come up and say a few words? Thank you. I would like to thank the Melhebs family. I've read the book. It's fascinating. Um, I'd like to thank um, the committee for, for uh, endorsing my nomination. Um, I, I sort of uh, fell into the uh, um, disability community in a way that uh, led me on the path where I am right now. So uh, I was the minister responsible for the, the Accessibility Act, Bill 59, um, and then worked with lots of disability persons uh, and organizations through that process, learned so much, um, and my background had been mostly with the women's community and, and domestic violence, and then uh, in 2017 uh, moved into Easter Seals, Nova Scotia, and have been a fierce advocate with my friend Sherry and many other uh, leaders in the disability community. Um, we were able, a couple of years ago, to look at the intersectionality between domestic violence and women with disabilities and were able to produce a report that thankfully all recommendations were accepted so uh, it's really nice to be able to still affect policy within this province um, uh, I wish that I was in a position to still affect it uh, because all children deserve to be in school all children if not all children can go to school then no children should be in school. Um, that's the way it's been in other provinces, and that's the way it should be here. Uh, so hopefully there will be a resolution to this. And I do know that there are families affected by this um, fire that have lost a house. And now this young fella has no school, no classroom, no home. So please keep that in mind when uh, thinking about uh, the wildfires and thinking about this ongoing labor dispute. Thank you.
just want to make sure that I don't miss anybody. So Cliff is not able to attend. Um, Katie, would you like to come up and say a few words? Hi, thank you. I just uh, very quickly wanted to pass on um, Robert's deep gratitude and thanks for the award. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here today, but I was happy to come and accept on his behalf. Um, Robert would, would, I would be remiss if I didn't say that Robert would credit all of the work that's been done at the Village of Greenwood to the support that he has from the Village Commission and, and the county. Um, and so would definitely say that he is not doing this alone. Um, so thank you very much. Before I relinquish the mic for closing from our esteemed MC Shelley, I would like to give a uh, thank you to Dawn and to Danny for carving out time to come in today and to speak so much about the quality of life and to lay some, some more foundational work on what's being done. So we truly do appreciate that. Uh, I'd also like to take this moment to thank Taylor uh, we do have a little something for you, Taylor, <laughs> if you'd like to come up and accept it. Again, thank you. Taylor has just graduated and uh, first full-time job. <laughs> and Shelley, I do have a little something for you as well. I would like to thank you for all of your work in emceeing and for pivoting again and again. <laughs> and I have an envelope here for you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll give the mic back to Shelley. <laughs> thank yous all around. So, just wanted to thank Sherry and Taylor for uh, passing out the awards and uh, pivoting and thank you all for your patience. And um, I also want to just congratulate all the reward, award recipients um, and their contributions to the community and the inclusion of persons with disabilities. This was a great way to start off Accessibility Awareness Week and I'd love to also thanks, thank on behalf of the PANS committee, uh, Minister Johns for his Access Awareness Week message, um, and also Don and Danny for showing how important it is to talk about quality of life. All our award recipients and their supporters for the contribution to the community, um, and all of you for being here. Thank you so much for supporting PANS, supporting this event, and um, Hopefully you're able to participate in many events this week for Access Awareness Week. Thank you so much and have a great day.